All right, welcome back. Today is the day we're doing sodium potassium pump. Woo! <laughs> the most important, probably the most important concept of physiology. If you're going to become a doctor, uh, any field of you know medicine, researcher, bio, you know any bio bio field, this is probably the most important concept. And so that is why we're making a whole separate video for this. There is five steps to this mechanism. All right, let's do this. So sodium potassium pump is also known as the sodium, light's too thick, as the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Okay, so you can either see any of these, you know, these two forms. Uh, I just say sodium, sodium potassium pump. Uh, your professor may say sodium potassium ATPase pump, but either or is fine. All right, so what's the, let's look at what this pump actually does. What's the point of this? So the point of this pump, this is a pump located in all the cells in your body. Okay, it is that important and there's millions of them, millions. So what we do is we pump three sodium ions outside the cell and two potassiums inside the cell using one ATP molecule. That's important. So there's a reason I highlighted uh, three sodiums and two potassiums. That is the ratio for the sodium potassium pump. It is always three sodiums and two potassiums. It's not four sodiums, it's not two sodiums, it's not one sodium, it's three sodiums for every two potassiums. So it's a three to two ratio. Always, 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 always and it uses one ATP molecule. This is 100% necessary. A lot of people forget the ATP molecule, but this is necessary for this entire pump to actually work. What else does it do? It helps maintain the resting membrane potential. So do you remember we said the resting membrane potential is like negative 65 millivolts or negative 70 millivolts? This is what helps maintain that negative 65 uh, we're going to go more into depth why this is important for the, you know, why do we need resting membrane potential. Uh, that'll be a later video, but this is just, we're going to go over it, how it maintains this number. And sodium potassium pump. It also maintains the ion concentration gradient. So do you remember we said in uh, earlier videos is that there's a high concentration of sodium outside and a high concentration of potassium inside the cell? This is how, it's, this is, how it is. The sodium potassium pump helps with that. And it is super important for action potential development and other uh, processes. Let's do it, step one. Okay, this is what the pump looks like, this, this light blue area. And then the dark blue is the lipid bilayer. So do you remember we went over uh, in the last video, if you watched that, uh, is this is the lipid bilayer. So what we're talking about is basically a form of this protein. There's many different forms they can take on. So what we're looking at is the antiport, okay? And remember I said this is like the sodium potassium pump? Well, here it is. This is an antiport. Okay, step one. So first we need to understand that the sodium concentration is low inside the cell. The sodium concentration, I did not mean to erase that, is high on the outside. Okay, so I, the, the potassium is in red and the sodium is in orange. Okay, what's going to happen? So on this protein structure, do we see the arrows and we see these little holes inside the protein structure, right? There's a hole here, a hole here, and a one here, right? So what, this, what is this? So the, this is a space for sodium to bind. So what the, what's basically happening is the protein pump, this is the pump, it's open to the inside of the cell, right? This is the inside of the cell, right? Inside the cell, and it's open on that side. Okay, there are three spots on this pump, in this protein, pump protein, same thing. There are three spots. And basically what this is, is pretend, um, let's say that this is a train, for example, right? And we're, we're saying all aboard, right? So all the, so the sodium, three sodium ions can go and attach. Potassium is not allowed to board the train. The, basically, the seats are reserved for sodium only. 
So only three sodiums can bind, no potassiums. It's not allowed to board the train. This is how we get the, you know, the three sodiums that we're talking about, okay? So next step, right? First step is pretty easy. So what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a random ATP molecule, right? I drew a little flame here because it's energy, right? So ATP is gonna break off, right? And it basically forms ADP plus P, which is, you know, adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. This is diphosphate, two phosphates. And the broken up phosphate is going to come over and it's going to bind to the pump. It's going to stick on there. This basically causes the pump to close. See how it's closed, right? It's, no, it's not accessible inside or outside, right? There's no, there's no way for stuff to get in or out. So the sodium are basically trapped inside. Okay, everything else stays the same. This is what we call phosphorylation. We take a phosphate group, we attach it to this pump. And what this phosphate is gonna do is basically gonna provide energy for this pump. Why do we need it? Okay, that's when step three comes into play. We get a conformational change. This phosphate that we just attach the pump causes the protein to change structure. It's called a conformational change, okay? The sodium is gonna, the, basically the seats on this train are, the, the conductor comes along and says, all right, sodium, you need to get out. The seat's no longer for you. So it shoves the sodium outside, okay? Now, let's talk about the ATP and why it's super important. Remember when we said there's a high concentration of sodium outside the cell and a high concentration, I mean, low concentration of sodium inside the cell. By properties of diffusion, sodium will not want to go outside, right? Because diffusion, as we defined uh, in a you know, previous episode or video, we said diffusion, diffusion, molecules, or in this case, ions, molecules go from areas of low concentration, sorry, high concentration, oh my God, high concentration to low concentration. I apologize for that mistake. Concentration, okay. So if you go from areas to high concentration, low concentration, well remember, we started out with sodium at a low concentration. So we're going from, and then we go to areas to high concentration. So we're going from low to high. Diffusion is right high to low. So this should not work. This is illegal by the properties of physics and biology, chemistry, whatever. It's illegal. It cannot happen. The reason this is able to happen is because the ATP. The ATP overcomes this diffusion gradient, the laws of diffusion, basically, and makes this happen. It dumps the sodium outside because the, AT, the, the power from the ATP is really in so much energy. It has the ability to defeat diffusion and make this happen. Hopefully that makes sense. So ATP is like the unstoppable force here. Okay. Step four. When the protein or the pump is open, right, to the outside of the cell, potassium is now able to join or uh, attach on these potassium spots here. So basically, remember like the train? Okay, the sodium hopped off now. Now the conductor's like, all right, potassium, it's your turn. These two seats are available and there's only two seats for you to get on. So two random potassium ions are gonna come on, hop on, okay? and they're gonna to stick to this protein. It's stuck to the seat, pretend it's like a glue on the seat, and the potassium is now stuck there. Final step, we get a conformational change. So this phosphate has left, remember you have the phosphate here, it is now gone, it dissipated into the atmosphere, whatever, it's gone, doesn't exist. This causes the conformational change. 
This conformational change basically eliminates the glue from the seat of the train. So the conductor is like, all right, get off. We're here, we're at, we're at our destination, get off. We don't, I don't want you potassiums anymore. They get kicked off the train. So they get dumped inside. They get dumped inside the, the cell. I should redraw this a little bit. This is like all covered up here. This should, uh, it's closed up on this side. My apologies. It's closed here. So they have only one way to go. Okay, they go inside the cell. So now this happens on 24 seven. It's always happening in every single cell of your body. This is super, super important. So after this happens, we go all the way back to step one and we start again. It's a cycle. It's an ongoing 24 seven cycle. We go step one to five, start again. One to five, start again. And we do this forever. This is one of the reasons we actually maintain our body temperature. There's many ways we maintain you know, our temperature, you know, 98 degrees or whatever. This is one of the ways, is that when this ATP releases heat, this is how we are still, you know, this is how we provide body heat. Uh, it's very minimal, but it does it. So there's something you need to know in physiology. And I, I mentioned this, you know, in the other two uh, steps is conformational change. There's a very common uh, saying in physiology. I'm going to write that. Uh, I'm going to write that down here. I'm going to rotate the page. Okay. Very, very, very common saying. It says, the saying goes, you change the structure. You change the function. This will go for everything you learn in physiology. If you change the structure of something, you change the function. This is exactly what we did here. We did a conformational change. The conformational, think about conformational as structural, right? We change the structure. We change the function. We change it so potassium can bind now. The structure change so potassium can bind now. We have a structural change. Uh, so potassium can let go and we can get sodium to join again. So we change the function, right? We're back here now. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, if there's any questions, please put in the comment section, but uh, this would conclude the famous sodium potassium pump video. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.